Welcome to Olds Mob 455. We're back on the Harley 165, and we're starting to put the clutch back together so we can close this thing up and get some paint on it. So these have these grooves on it right there that'll grab the friction plates. Come on. And then you got the sheet, the steel plates. And as this is spinning, these are locked to the shaft. And then when you squeeze down on this, it mates the two shafts together and then it motivates the vehicle forward. So before you put the clutch in, you can't forget this piece right here. That comes across from the other side. Most of them are like that as you're putting the clutch in. Then there's a, a cam that that uh, takes the spring pressure and pushes that back, releases the clutch, and then uh, you, get, you can get neutral. Yeah, through that shaft are actually a couple more pins, but they go in from the other side, so. So what you gotta come up with is two little bolts and a stack of washers. You just had these two pieces. So it's squeezing this together. Now you're gonna put this thing in Springs are compressed, and I don't think we got enough. We're gonna to have to compress it some more. You gotta get a snap ring in here. That's as far down as this is gonna go. So after the snap ring is engaged in this groove, now you can release the pressure, and now all these springs are gonna to wanna to push up against that snap ring. Hopefully it never comes out. Oh, she's seating pretty good now. In old school, we had Permatex that was like a black tar. And it just filled in voids. Now this is like a silicone, it's black. And I'm just putting a thin schmear so it'll hold the gasket in place. I'll put a th thin schmear on the other side of the gasket. Just in case. If, it was a pretty good mating surface here. I don't think it was taken apart too many times. Because usually when you see these things, they've been butchered. A real old engine. Somebody's you know, pried them apart and there's a gouge in them. And sometimes you got to fill them with a little epoxy or... Sand out nicks. Okay, I'm putting the cover back on. Put the glue uh, the sealer on that side. Now we got it on here. So, is that washer? Yeah. You gotta remember this thrust washer right there so this doesn't wear away on this. And then there's two pins that have to engage. On the opposite side of the engine now, and this is where the stator is, we were just checking all the wires, and we were tracing them out, and the one that goes to the points, and this has to be insulated. Before we were videoing, we had this, and checking this, so when you were touching here and then touching the ground, you didn't get anything. Right now, the points are closed. And then if I open, see if I open it far enough, it hits that screw. But as this thing's spinning around, there's 12 volts going to it. When it opens it, it collapses the field, and then it goes to the coil and uh, ignites the coil, makes a hotter spark to fire the spark plug. But we got to clean this all up and put this other side together, and then we're going to paint it. So this is what holds the spring pressure on these brushes. Remember when I was told, telling you you have to have them receded back as you're sticking it over the armature? And then these would come in, you're, you're going to push this on, and they clip onto these little ears. This looks to be like a four brush setup. Ran a couple continuity checks on it. We think it's okay. The stator. We're going to take these brushes out and clean them up. If you remember the last video, they were uh, pretty stuck. Oh, it's 
all gummy. So this little wire has to ride in this slot so it can be, you know, travel up and down as, you know, it's going to wear away. They're real long and they have spring pressure behind them so they wear, it's a wearable unit. There's a number on it. You can buy new brushes for it. They're all springy. That's the way they're supposed to be. We sprayed all the carbon out of here, but now as the armature's flying by, I want to get these magnets nice and shiny so as they sweep by they will create an alternating current and after oh that's got too much crap on it so uh when it makes an alternating current that's no good for the battery so when you take alternating current and then clip it off you know like a sea serpent and just clip the humps off then it charges the battery like rectified is what they call it where you're taking half the sine wave and then it thinks it's getting direct current and it charges your battery and I went and looked at some pictures and some of them have a totally empty space there's no battery there's no regulator and I'm like maybe it's got a magneto they look a lot cooler with a magneto, but they're harder to start. Guys would do that on a on a chopper, so you wouldn't have a battery, and you, they make their frames lower, and you're sitting lower. But then you come to a stop sign, and you don't have a battery, and the thing's going chug, 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 chug. The light's so dim that the cops would give you a hassle. So a lot of guys would just put a little, it's called a battery eliminator, or a little dry cell battery just so the lights would be, you know, bright on light on. Then other times when you rev the bike up, all of a sudden would blow the balls. So you had to put some kind of a resistor in there in the light shell so that it wouldn't ever let it go higher than 12 volts and blow the bulbs. I'm just trying to get all this black crap off of there. So these are nice and shiny. And believe it or not, these are all insulated in between here. So as these brushes are on here, all these windings come and it's on off, on off, on off. I just took all the springs back out of it, slid the brushes back to slide it back over that. So as the clutch levers up here, comes around, goes to the opposite side of the bike, comes through into here, and the cable has a spring in here, but this as it's going, you'll see how it's it's ramped. That gap gets bigger back here. So it, it does a quarter crawl. It's on a screw thread or something. So that's what pushes this rod in here. It goes across to the other side and that's what disengages your clutch. You can see the sprocket teeth are worn. They're starting to look laid back. And this is wearing down here, and then it starts to ride high, and it's taken off the metal on the end of the teeth. The next guy will put new sprockets and chains on it. We're not going to. No, it's a shame that it got rusty, but you can hardly see the Harley Davidson emblem on it. But that's got to be painted. These didn't have O-rings. And they got a chamfered slot in here. The threads don't seal it. You know, it's not a pipe thread. And this has a taper. And that's a taper right there. I thought that would seal it, but I'm thinking it's supposed to have an O-ring in here, but this one's a little loose. If it stops and we can't even get to the taper, then it doesn't work. Yeah, that'll work. It's perfect. What this had was a torn screen, and it was all corroded with white stuff in, and these holes were clogged. So we blew stuff through here and we got these freed up and you know if you're running the tank down to this level well then it would start spitting and sputtering and then you flip it to reserve I mean it's off right now you flip it to reserve and then you get like this much more fuel coming down and it all goes through a pretty fine hole but this is all freed up 
I'm doing a metal prep. We're going to put a cream liner on the inside of it, and we'll start doing body work and paint it. As you turn this, see that underneath? You're walking it up. You're pulling that out, and it's just exposing a hole going through here. It's all small. The engine doesn't drink that much fuel at a time. We're doing the first step of the sealer kit. The degreasing portion. We're on some air through there to try to dry it out. It's all coming out where that cut cock goes. This fender was all crashed in and I got this kink out and this, this in, in, but this has got to curve this way, a little curve that way. It's kind of hard, but with this thing and a hammer, It'll have a thin layer of bond on it for sure. So when somebody chopped the fender off, they took the stock light bracket and just heated this up and bent it. So it sat up on the back. And every time you swung your legs all over, you hit that thing. But these things only have one wire going to them. Just a single element bulb. These are just running lights. It's always hard to get a compound curve. So this... Looking, thinking of it upside down, you got a high point there, a high point there, and then this is bashed in, so we gotta try getting that down so you lift it off a little. This is all the chain oil that flings off in dirt, and if we're gonna paint it, we might as well paint the whole inside and outside, and it looks clean. Once you end up getting all the paint off, then you can start seeing little dingers, and then you start working them out. You got a dinger here, one there, here. These are supposed to be here for the frame, but down here, we're, you know, all you see is this, really, when you look at a bike. There's the three holes. Some guy just modified it before. Now I'm going to straighten this out a bit. We're trying to get those bars off, but it seems like a can of worms, and the neck's working pretty good, so we're just going to leave all that alone. And we've wrung these wires out. I figured out that this is a high-low switch, and then the horn is over there, and found a schematic. We'll try to solder some fresh wires on here, slip some heat shrink over this. This is the front hub. Speedo cable goes down there. The brakes stay, you know, locates on a tab right there so it doesn't swing around it's holding it stationary and then you can see how this is spreading the brake shoes apart and the cable comes through here there's a little gear on the end and then this has a gear built right in here maybe this thing comes off I don't know but there's a gear on the hub I'm trying to get all the loose foam off these ones. Keep flipping it and flipping it wherever you can get at it. We'll do that and you just keep changing tools to get in the tight spots. Being a shop that doesn't have a lot of tools, if we would have had a dustless blaster, we would have had this done in no time. But here we are with wire wheels, sandpaper rolls and stuff, and trying to get all the old paint off of it, it takes time. I mean, this is a couple hours of just cleaning, and then we'll go to metal etch primer and high build, you know, and just start doing it. But you can see how, just to get the parts cleaned up, and we went to go fit this one. The guy said it was a Hummer fender, but it must be like a Sportster fender. It doesn't, it doesn't fit.